It's come to my attention that I haven't shown the Detroit Red Wings the love that they deserve. In fact, because they swept the Montreal Canadiens season series yesterday, I wanted to take some time to actually acknowledge the Red Wings and go over some of the potential moves for the future that they can do and talk a little bit about the trade rumor side of things with the Red Wings. Because it's no secret, the Red Wings have been bad this year. Historically bad, in fact. So much to the point that people are labeling Montreal as the ultimate failure due to the fact that they have lost to the Detroit Red Wings in regulation not once, not twice, but four times this season. And as a Habs fan, it kind of hurts inside, but as a Red Wings fan, it kind of feels very, very, very funny in a very self-deprecating kind of way. But let's talk a little bit about some of the trade possibilities that the Detroit Red Wings have within their system as the trade deadline approaches. I got three names here that I wanted to bring up that each have very different discussion points. So without further ado, let's talk about the first guy here, Andreas Athanasiu. This is one of the more obvious trade ideas that has presented itself within the media and the trade rumor side of things over the past few months. Athanasiu is a guy who literally scored 30 goals last year. He was really, really good for the Red Wings. And now, as a guy who has been struggling quite a lot this season, especially compared to the year that he just put up last year, it's really easy to see why people are putting Athanasiu on the trading block. This season, Andreas Athanasiu has taken a step down. He's at 10 goals in 45 games played and 24 points. He's at a league worst, minus 43. And that is a really, really bad number. Although that does not discredit the fact that Andreas Athanasiu legitimately does have some good NHL qualities. In particular, it's the obvious one. His speed is very, very, very good. Now you can debate as to whether or not what he does with that speed is a positive thing out there, but the fact of the matter is his speed allows him to be one of the fastest players on the ice, if not consistently the fastest player on the ice, and whenever he wants to, he can just turn on the Jets and absolutely take over the control of a game. Andreas Athanasiu is a guy who is still only young, and he is on an expiring deal. At 25 years of age and the end of a $3 million contract, he's got some room to move if a team is looking for a nice speedy center to probably complement their middle six. As for the return, Andreas Athanasiu is a guy who I'm honestly gonna say is worth more than what a lot of people are saying, which is a second round pick. I would be surprised if he only got a second, considering the market that has already been established for forwards like Blake Coleman, guys like Zucker, guys like Tyler Toffoli. I'm not going to say that Athanasiu is at the same level of those guys, but I will say he's not far behind in terms of straight up just the value, the package that he brings to a team and how perceivably desirable that would be. I don't think he only gets a second. In fact, I think he gets a little bit more than that. Also, the fact that he's an RFA leads teams to having better negotiation rights with him than if he were a UFA. There's an underrated valuable package that comes with Athanasiu's profile, and I think that's something that a team will probably bite on by giving up maybe a somewhat valuable prospect, maybe even a late first. I see him as a little bit more valuable than just a second, and that's just me, but for Red Wings fans, it's interesting to take a look at the differing perspectives because almost everybody is interested in an Athanasiu trade. It looks like, at least from Detroit Red Wings Nation I've seen on Twitter, Reddit, everywhere, but nobody can really decide on what a consistent return would be. Everybody has their different ideas. But let's go over to another name here that the Red Wings have kind of inserted into their trade talks. This one's a little bit of an underrated one. It's Jonathan Bernier. And this one is kind of weird because Bernier is a guy who only has 13 wins this year. He's only got one shutout this year. His goals against average is 289. 
However, he's at a 908 save percentage, and the guy has honestly been really, really solid this year. Bernier has kind of bounced back, and it's weird to say that in 2020. He's been a valuable asset this year, and everybody in Detroit kind of loves him now because he has been this good. But the fact of the matter is, Jonathan Bernier is expendable because he's 31 years old, and because he's probably not going to be on this team by the time Valeno, Zadina, Sider, all these guys hit their primes. Bernier's got one more year at $3 million after this year, and for any team that is looking for a solid, solid backup goalie, you could get a Bernier. I'm not saying that he's a backup goalie in Detroit, I'm just saying that if a team is a playoff contender, they probably already have a starting goaltender. Having a Bernier as your number two wouldn't be a bad idea at all. As I said, it's $3 million, so it's a pretty steep price for a guy that you would deem a quote-unquote backup. But even for teams that are looking for a goaltender, a guy like a Bernier wouldn't be a bad bet. As I said, he's played pretty well this year, and he's on Detroit. How worse could it get? As for the return on Bernier, this really varies from team to team. It varies based off of how that team values a goaltender who can potentially steal you a few games once in a while, and who can provide some consistent goaltending throughout. Different teams have different values for that, but I think if the Red Wings are able to pry away a pretty nice pick, either in the first or the second round, and maybe a prospect or two, that would be ideal. Now obviously, there's a little bit of a concern as to what happens after Bernier gets traded, if that even happens for the Red Wings, but as some people have pointed out, it doesn't really matter because, as with the situation with Bernier, this Red Wings season has already been terrible. There's no real need to try to put this team in a position to win for the rest of this season. Trading Bernier will make your team worse, and in fact, will probably help out your Lafreniere odds. Now, I'm not saying to intentionally tank, but that is an underlying aspect of a potential Bernier trade. It's unavoidable. You can't do it. It's inevitable. Like Thanos. There's really no need. There's really no need, nor is there an actual way to replace Bernier, aside from getting another goaltender in free agency, which you know will be available. So to me, Bernier is a guy that honestly does have some value, and you could get some good assets back for him. Now on to the last name that I wanted to talk about here. This one might come as a surprise. Let's talk about Dennis Chalowski, a guy who, honestly, I thought was going to be a little bit better than he is this year. The guy's still on an entry-level deal, he's at 22 years old, and at this season, he's not been amazing. He's at 8 points in 33 games with the Wings, and in Grand Rapids, he's at 12 points in 24 games. It's kind of weird, because Chalowski has low-key already been passed by some of the other defensive young guys in the Red Wings system. Guys like Sider, guys like Lindstrom, all these other guys have kind of cemented themselves as better defensive assets on the Red Wings. So, Chalowski to me is a guy who is expendable because of the value that he brings. When you take a look at a face value, Chalowski is a 22-year-old left-handed defenseman already playing in the NHL, who's had some pretty good numbers playing in the WHL and, of course, throughout the AHL, etc. So, there is a value in a Chalowski just based off of the fact that he does still have potential to grow into a really good player. It's just, the Wings are in a position where they have other really good potential defensive players too. Chalowski is arguably behind in the depth chart, and as a result, it makes me think he's kind of expendable in this situation. Think about it. If you're the Red Wings and you're making a trade, trading away at Chalowski is an opportunity to add some more assets back. Some people have been talking about it specifically like this. If you have a trade and you add in a Chalowski, is that enough to entice a team to maybe include a first or maybe include a little bit of a better prospect or whatever? Chalowski to me is another piece that I believe the Red Wings can afford to lose. And in fact, he's a pretty valuable piece. And I think anybody who knows the Red Wings system, their prospects and their young guys can kind of see that. But you can't say that I'm wrong when I say that there are other really good defensive prospects too, and other ones that have arguably overtaken him in the depth chart. 
So to me, Chalowski is also expendable. Bernier is expendable too. Andreas Athanasiu has always been expendable, but this video goes over all three of them. Comment down below what you think about my thoughts and all that stuff. Talk about the trades down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>